Hi, welcome to Mother's Tarot. This is Loretta. I hope everyone is doing fantastic today. This is uh, video number eight of uh, the series, What Star Are We From? Message from Above. Thank you to all my subscribers and returning visitors. Thank you for being here and supporting my channel. And let's get into this reading. And I'm going to do the intro for the video for those that are new. I am using the Galactic Heritage cards. And I pulled these cards uh, two days ago. So on the 26th of July, publishing today on the 28th. Um, so I'm pulling them for me, but I'm sharing this with you and hopes. And also, I believe that you are going to hear a lot in these cards that will resonate with your own self. And in that, for me, it is helping me uh, to evolve as a human, as an earthling, and understand, bring some understanding to the cosmos and our role in it and um, our relationship with the star people, all the life beings out in the cosmos uh, that have been gracious enough to look after us, to help us along the way. And, and now uh, they're really stepping it up to reveal the story of who we are. Okay, with that said, I'm going to begin. The Galactic Heritage cards are used to help us to tap into our star lineage in karmic patterns and also reveal lessons brought to Earth from the stars and how these lessons can be used in our life on Earth now. A star lineage spread more accurately reflects what stellar influences are working with you now in the moment you choose the cards. If you do readings often, the cards may change, but over time, you will notice a pattern that keeps emerging if you are working with the cards in a sincere way. Also, I want to interject right here that I am um, recording all the cards and the number of times they appear. So I believe later on, um, I will be able to pull out the, the dominant appearing cards and get a full, uh, wonderful message out of that. Okay, finish up here. Uh, this is a fluid system without fixed positional meanings because it represents the multidimensional and holographic nature of consciousness. Each card has a number, a civilization, a theme, and text that goes with it. The number in order is based on the journey from unity to polarity through integration and back to unity. We have 21 different species and 108 cards in this deck. Four timeline suits, past, present, future, and parallel. The cards are numbered based on the journey from unity to polarity and back to unity, reflecting a universal theme that of a state of oneness, a fragmentation into individuality, and the process of integrating back to the state of oneness. Thus, the cards are in the lower numbers represent the earliest process of unity, fragmenting into individuality, and the star consciousness who guides us. Early to mid-range numbers represent the physical civilizations. The higher number cards are the, are the reintegration cards, representing a movement of energy from unity to polarity and then to reintegration. Card numbers later in the deck represent the integra integrative processes of our star family as it, is, as it moved towards unity. 
parallel cards refer to a certain era of that civilization on the card. Future cards are in, the, in an era of mature civilizations where our extraterrestrial guidance mostly comes. These cards work with your intuition. Okay. All right. Now, I will begin. Okay. The first card up in the first position, we have solar consciousness, solar system parallel. And this card has come up. This is the second time. This one has come up. So like I said, I've been I'm tracking the cards and the appearance of them. Because this is going to really help down the line, I believe. So hold. Yeah. So anyway, number 34, solar consciousness. And I'm gonna open the book and I'm gonna read the text. Number 34. Here we go. Our solar system archetypally represents all the aspects of human consciousness. This is visible through astrology. The sun represents our highest potential of consciousness, the higher self. This is the higher self card. You have pulled this card because either you already have a very strong connection to your higher self, or it is time now to develop that relationship. This is also a card of integration. Solar consciousness compels us to integrate our parts of and become whole again. This process happens naturally as we connect with and become the higher self. The process has begun. This is a highly archetypical, powerful card one of the most powerful in the deck in terms of personal evolution. It can represent the sun of our solar system, soul, or the archetypical energy of any sun or star. It represents the bright light of awareness or the higher self. This is the energy that guides us, a consciousness beyond human personality that is the awareness of all of creation itself. If it came up in your reading, then it could mean several things depending on your situation. It could be acknowledging the connection with your higher self that you are already utilizing or even a spirit guide who brings you messages from the higher aspects of you. Or if you don't feel particularly connected to your higher self, it could be a message that you now need to start making this connection. The energy is strongly present, so why not learn to use it? Your higher self is most likely sending a message to you, and it is likely to it's is likely you know what that message is, even if you don't want to fully acknowledge it. The energy of any star in its raw form is a direct representation of the intelligence of creation itself pure consciousness. It hasn't fragmented or individualized. It exists in a fully integrated state. This energy is present for you, and it is, in a sense, waiting for you to acknowledge it and accept its presence in your life. Even those people who feel fully connected to their higher selves can always go deeper. <clears throat> and this did resonate for me. I have been consulting and directly speaking with my higher self. In fact, I've given her name, Razzle Dazzle. So <laughs> I, it is something I'm working on. And it did resonate with me. And I hope it resonated with you too. Now our second card up is Dream Time and Awakening, number 91. The Citizen whale, citizen whale, I believe is how it's pronounced, a parallel timeline. <clears throat> okay, I'll read this one. 
91. And let's see, has this come up? Yeah, this is the second time this card has come up. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, here we go. Well, consciousness, which is connected to Sirius and is more like a group consciousness, has the capability of rising above the dream of physical reality and operating in an awakened state. For millennia, wells have been our, guided beyond, our guides beyond the physical plane. Now that it is time for human consciousness to evolve, we too must learn to rise above the dream of physical reality and enter the awakened state that is the true reality in meditation. Imagine the loving presence of a whale and connect with its heart. Breathe together. Let it guide you through dream time and into awakening. Whale consciousness connected to Sirius is very unique, whereby individual human souls incarnate in bodies. Whale consciousness is a fifth density vibration and represents group consciousness. Each whale is actually a group unified field of consciousness. Whale consciousness has the ability to operate in an awakened state, seeing the true reality of existence instead of the dream time of the illusion of physical reality. For millennia, whales have acted as spiritual guides for indigenous people around the world, coming to them in dreams to communicate the greater truths of the universe. If this card has appeared in your reading, you most likely have a strong connection with Sirius and or whale consciousness already, or this consciousness is just beginning to work with you and wishes to be acknowledged. If you wish to work with it, connect with whale consciousness before going to sleep. This will open you to further communicate and guidance in the dream state. Well, consciousness is essential to this time now on earth because they serve as guides for human consciousness as we break free of illusion and begin to awaken. It is also possible that if this card appears in your reading, there is something in your life that needs to be seen clearly without illusion in order for you to move to the next level of your growth. Yeah. See, this one, uh, it talks about the dream time. This is something I need to delve into a bit more. Um, because of my experience in life, I shut my dreams down uh, as a teenager, an older teenager, uh, uh, 16, 17, 16 for sure. And... Um, so anyway, that, that is something I need to try to get back in line with, for lack of a better way to put it. Okay, our next card is number 100. we got Ultimate Evolution, Zeta Reticuli, Future. Ultimate Evolution. I really liked what this one had to say, this card. I did a little uh, video just on this card alone. Here we go. This card represents the birth of a new species. The Zeta transformed themselves from a species of fear and limitation to one of higher consciousness, compassion, and love. It was not an easy road, but an immensely fulfilling one. Because of this, they can now assist countless other species in their evolution. This card represents your personal evolution. You have the capability to make dramatic changes in who you are by walking through the fire, confronting rather than avoiding your fears, asking for help and trusting the process. Your galactic family is with you. You are not alone. This card refers to the Zeta era in which their fears and challenges were behind them and they became an enlightened species. It is, okay, um, 
mirror reflection. Oh, that's card 99. It also relates to this card. This card refers to the profound evolution that happens when beings confront their fears and the issues they don't want to see. But it is much more than confrontation. It also has to do with seeing the issues you are avoiding clearly and not looking away while surrendering to the process of owning their presence in your life, embracing them as teachers, having gratitude, and never ever judging yourself because of them. This leads to compassion, self-responsibility, self-respect, and the ability to receive and give infinite amounts of unconditional love. This process is so powerful that if everyone in the whole human race were willing to clearly see themselves and do the work necessary for evolution, Earth could transform within a very short amount of time. If this card came up in your spread, it is likely that it is encouraging you to accelerate your evolution by acting, by activating this process of clear sight and self-acceptance for the purpose of your evolution. This card may also be acknowledging that you have already begun the process. If you are aware of having connections with the Zeta species, then the card may also be behind, also be reminding you of those connections. The Zetas, having gone through the process of ultimate evolution, can be wonderful guides along your path. Yeah, see, this this made me think of uh, the zero point energy that we so desperately need here on our planet to save this earth. This is the first time this card has come up for me. So I was, like I said, I it had a a, a profound impact on me, and a, and I did a video just on this one card. Our next card is number 40. This is the second appearance for it, this card. Stubbornness, Pallades Past. I know there's an important message in this one too. They're all important messages. Here we go. This message relates to having a fixed idea of how things should be and trying to force reality to fit that picture. This was a strong trait in the ancient Palladian culture, which created many problems for the civilization. Some of us still carry this habitual pattern. Take a look at the situation you want changed. Be honest and see if you are trying to force a reality that doesn't exist in the now. Be truthful. In order to make a change, we first must fully, we first must fully accept and relax with the situation as it is. Only then will things change in a natural way. And this is something that I work on all the time. All the time. <laughs> you know, try not to get my energy involved and let it just happen. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Okay, the previous card, number 39, also represents one of the most painful lessons of the Palladians from this era. When the species was young, they were very idealistic, much like teenagers of today. They had a view of how reality should be, and they sought to force their vision on others. This is often a challenge of new species when they are young. Earth humans have this trait as well. During the dark times of Orion, the Orion people were in a lot of pain. The young Palladian species felt it was their duty to boldly come into the Orient system and force the empire to free its people. These Palladians were blind to the fact that they were creating karma for themselves and meddling in a situation that was not theirs to fix. In response, the Orients destroyed a planet in the Palladian system that was known to be one of the most beautiful. The Palladians were stunned and traumatized, but it was the experience they needed to grow up as a species and drop their arrogance 
from their Lyrian forefathers. They left that planet, a lifeless shell floating in space, to always remind them of their own ignorance. If this card came up in your reading, look at the surrounding cards. It may be about a connection that you have to this time in Palladian history, or it may simply be a warning about becoming attached to your beliefs about how things should be in reality and a stubborn drive to change them according to what you feel is right. Yeah, those are really profound words. You know, our belief system, it's been, it's because of all the drilling we've had it put into us since birth about how things should be. In reality, uh, oftentimes it's not. So we need to, uh, sh I know I do, need to shift my perspective. And I am, I am working on that. Number 77 is our next card up. This is the first time receiving this card. Being the mentors, earth, future. Yeah, look at that picture. Yeah. Okay, number 77. I'm really glad you're all here. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Okay, number 77, being the mentors. Since ancient times, our planet has had non-human mentors who have helped us through our evolutionary challenges. Eventually, humankind will be mentors for others, lesser evolved species we will encounter in the universe. But even now, we have the responsibility to spiritually mentor those on Earth who ask for our help without forcing it. You may be called on to do this in this life because you have done it in other lives and on other worlds. Trust in your ability to help others, even if you don't think you don't know how, even if you think you don't know how. Let your words and deeds come from your heart. That is all you need. Awakened species, all know that the process of mentorship and apprenticeship is a natural part of evolution. For millennia, evolved species have mentored lesser evolved species as a gesture of love, respect, and welcoming to the galactic community. Since the ancient days on Earth, evolved species met, mentored the early humans, and they still continue to do so, even those currently those mentorships are mostly done quietly. Humans once awakened will be called on to pass along the service to another lesser evolved species. If this card comes up in your reading, it may have many meanings. It could be referring to a mentor who works with you now, human or ET, and is a role model for you. It may also mean that you need to open to this type of mentorship. Or it may mean that the universe is asking you to become a, men a mentor for another person in your life. Look to the surrounding cards and your life circumstances for further clarity. No matter what the meaning, know that the mentor-apprentice relationship is one of the most sacred in all of the creation and being asked to fill this role, either as a mentor or as an apprentice, is a blessing. Embrace this role with your, feel, with your full heart and notice how it enriches your life. Yeah, that's wonderful. I was just listening to uh, Greg Graydon, I think it is. And he said something really profound. And I wrote it down, and of course I can't find it. Um, what was it? It was about um, what he is always uh, putting out 
the energy that he puts out to the to the universe. Uh, he wants he bases it in beauty, um, love, gratitude. You know, he tries to live in that moment. I, I thought it was really beautiful and wise. Okay. All right. Now we're up to card number three. And this is the first time this one has come up. Although it has been the topic because uh, I have read on cards uh, around this one. Or a little higher. But change was the topic really so we've got change andromeda a parallel time okay <clears throat> number three hang on just about there there we go okay in physical reality change is the only constant yeah, that's what it was. It is the only thing that's constant. In physical reality, change is the only constant. We spend so much time and energy trying to keep things the same that we miss the profound experience that change brings. Andromedans live in a very unusual reality paradigm, that of constant change. The change is so dramatic that the only way to orient yourself in reality is to have a strong inner compass based on consciousness. You have pulled this card because either you have a strong connection with the Andromedans, you love change, or you need to connect with Andromedan energy and let go of the fear of change. This is your next lesson. Oh, yes. I am dealing with that. <laughs> okay, here we go. It may seem odd that the energy of a galaxy outside of ours is being utilized in this deck. The reason for this is that you can see yourself more clearly when there is a contrasting idea that can serve as a comparison. The energy of the Andromeda galaxy provides this, con provides this contrast to help us see ourselves more clearly. Within the template for experience in our reality lies the issue of polarity. This is a primary theme we must explore on our way back to wholeness. In addition, we have a tendency to like things to stay the same so that we can feel safe and secure. This part of our nature is based on ego need. And until we transcend that need, we will always stay stuck. Living in an Andromedan reality requires us to create an anchor to reality in our own consciousness rather than in the outside world. This is an important concept that actually has to do with how humans will eventually master space travel. It is also profoundly connected to spiritual awakening. Thus, Andromedans act as masters and guides for our evolution, teaching us to move from polarity and the fear of change to integration and the embracing of the changing nature of reality. If this card appears in your spread, look closely at your relationship to change. Are you addicted to it or do you fear it? Perhaps it is time to forge a new relationship with one of the only constants of life, change. I've experienced a lot of that in my life. Yeah. So what can I say about that? It's constant. <laughs> Just like you said. Okay, now number 38. And this is the second time this one's come up. Black League Patterning, Orient, Past. Interesting little picture. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Number 38. 
The secret Orion Society fighting the negative forces was called the Black League. They operated covertly and were a major force for inspiration and hope. A pop culture metaphor would be like the Jedi Knights from Star Wars. You have had experience with this group and this latent tendency of resisting authority or fighting for peace is a deep karmic pattern. Today is important that this polarity of us versus them be healed. Shift your focus away from light and dark scenarios. Begin to see reality in a unified way with all manifestations being on equal and valuable part of creation itself. See, I feel this strong, this card very strongly. Yeah. So I, and I am, I'm, it's part of the balancing act, you know, for me, I think. Uh, but yeah. Okay, I'm going to read on. The Black League is a term referring to the resistance groups that formed during the darkest times in Orion. These groups were usually run by priests who practiced pagan mysticism and who were also warriors as well. These groups ultimately helped change the consciousness within the Orient system so it could transform, but not without a struggle. They also had to learn the folly of living in polarity, which is what you do when you fight darkness. So even though the Black League and the Orient civilization as a whole eventually transcended polarity and healed itself, many beings who had lives were brought this polarized energy to... Okay, many beings who had lives there brought this polo polarized energy to Earth, and it is still playing out here. On Earth, we can see it playing out through secret societies who believe they fight for freedom from tyranny, religious extremists, groups who believe they are liberating people, and any group of or person who views reality in a polarized way and fights against the side they label as negative. This only perpetuates polarity. If this card comes up in your reading, it usually comes up with other Orion cards or cards with a similar thing. It is most likely suggesting that you look at your view of reality and how you might see it in a polarized way. It is encouraging you to begin to view reality as more of a unified field and that there is a greater balance that perhaps you cannot see. It is asking you to totally transform your life form, one of the polarity to one of unity. Transform your life from one of polarity to one of unity. Yeah, this really speaks to me. It's it's why I do this. <laughs> and I don't listen to the news. You know, I'm not grinding that in every day. You know, that's very polarizing for me. Very polarizing. But when I am, my headspace is about our consciousness and all the influences on it, both the seen and the unseen, you know, trying to take the bigger picture in. So I don't get caught up so much in that polarized reality, you know, so I, I try to make choices where I'm not feeling that. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that. <laughs> how's it make you feel you know how how are you dealing with that let me know okay now the this is the eighth card now this is the um unseen energies this is the card i that i bring out from the bottom of the deck and this is the first time this card has come up and it is number 31 rejecting emotion zeta reticuli past so, 
Here we go. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Humans have a tendency to avoid pain at all costs. However, our emotions are an important function of being human. If we make choices to avoid emotional pain, we end up rejecting all emotions, including positive ones. This happened to the Zetas. Life then became life then becomes dull and we feel disconnected from those around us and the universe. Let yourself embrace all emotion, positive and negative, as being a valid part of being human. Let emotion teach you and lessons you need let emotions teach you the lessons you need to learn and enrich your life. Zetas learned this lesson too. They then had to relearn emotions from humans. It does something. You hear that? Then they had to relearn emotions from humans. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, here we go. If you have pulled this card and are not familiar with the Zeta species, Look at the information for card 30 also. This card refers to a specific aspect of their challenges in this past era. The early Zeta species, originally a Vega colony, felt that focusing on mental development was the way to evolve. They submerged their emotions, they sub, yeah, they submerged their emotions and intuitions so profoundly that they lost touch with a vital part of themselves. The society became extremely unbalanced because of this, and the Zetas lost touch with their connection to the universe and themselves. There is a danger on Earth in present day that humans will take a similar path. If this card comes up, in your reading, take a look at the other cards as well as your life circumstances. Do you have a habit of rejecting your emotions and pushing them deep inside? This habit will always result in those submerged emotions spilling out. Whether through health issues or further emotional challenges, take a good look at your emotional patterns and see if this is a habit in your life. If so, seek to change it and befriend your emotions. The Zetas eventually had to seek help from humans to learn about emotion and begin to reintroduce it in their lives. It is possible that you have also had a relationship with the Zetas in helping them relearn healthy emotional processes. That might be one reason why this card is in your reading. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Some feelings are really hard to deal with. Emotions? Oh, yeah. Some take, you know. Yeah. I have, uh, you know, the, the older ones, like me, we've been through this. So, anyway, this was really interesting, wasn't it? I really like this. I love getting submersed in this and reading this, these cards and learning, learning about myself and humans in general, you know, why we are prone in areas of our life, the way we are. And, uh, so these, I know this is really helping me, and I and I hope it's helping you also. And uh, you know, get in touch with our own self and the world around us, and kind of change our perspective a bit to help us evolve and move forward. So, anyway, that's what I've got for you today in this video. And um, thank you. Thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your comments, your likes. I'm just really grateful. Thank you. Please take care of yourselves.
remember to breathe, meditate if you can. And, uh, but most of all, just take care of yourselves, good care of yourselves, love yourself, be your own best friend. I want to tell you, you know, when you finally reach a state in your life where you are comfortable in your own skin, you actually like spending time with yourself. Man, you really got it. You, you, it, it is such a blessing. And uh, we should all feel that way. So love yourself, be kind to yourself, and it will spill out to everyone around you and into the universe, and we will all be better for it. Okay. <laughs> all right. I love you. Thank you for being here, and I will see you in the next video. This is Mother's Tarot signing off for now. Bye-bye.